Sixth Ward, yes, and from the 16th Ward, Hal Baskin. Gentlemen, thanks for Thank staying you. with us a little yes, bit sir. longer. Oh, my pleasure. Because um, the bottom line is we are in some dire times right now. Chicago is in debt. Yes. Crime is rampant. The unemployment rate is sick. Yes. We are in a deep recession right now. I still got phone calls coming in. Che, Ryan Fest Smith, we, as the show ended, you were talking about economic development, talking mm -hmm. about, the, all three of you were talking about the Walmarts. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about crime, though. You mentioned education. Yes. How can that decrease crime? And, and be very specific when it comes to sustainability and measurability in mm -hmm. terms of education decreasing crime. Well, we know that education can decrease crime uh, because we can see uh, directly the programs, the non-for-profit programs that take young brothers and sisters in, the re-entry programs that take young brothers and sisters in, and the ones that are successful, how low the recidivism rate is when it comes to going back to prison. One of the things that I would like to do as alderman, I don't need $110,000 to live in the 20th Ward. I, I'm not doing this for the money. I want to give back a portion of the automatic salary to help create entrepreneurial mechanisms for young brothers and sisters that are re-entering the system to start their own businesses. Mm. This is how we create economic development, but they have to be educated. One of the things that we see is that we don't have a problem uh, as black people starting businesses. We have a problem maintaining businesses and helping them to thrive. Mm. So we need training and entrepreneurism to help our businesses thrive. You have a white business, a Korean business, and a black business. The white business and the Korean business on the same block are doing great. The black business is suffering. Mm -hmm. Not because uh, something's wrong with the people in the war, but because the person with the black business, the black business owner, needs to know about the paperwork, needs to know about the taxes and the infrastructure so that they can give a quality product at a quality price. Hal Baskin. Education decreasing crime. Talk to me. Well, education is going to have a, a major impact on that. But what decreases crime is that when young people see things, they can do things. So they got to, they got to be. They can't be what they can't see. They got to see it. And, and I've been working with young people for the last 32 years in this community. I open up the Peace Community Center to get young people off the street with little or no money. You know, pro bono, uh, twenty thousand dollars a year for myself, mm -hmm. feeding them in the Kids Cafe program, getting them off. And, and, and having them learn some things when they get out of school, they have a, a quiet environment to come and learn at the Peace Community Center, which is right around the corner at 6455 South Warren, Peoria. Uh, it, it, it takes some, some nurturing because most of the families are not like the Huxtables or the, or the <laughs> Cleveland Beaver family, right. you know what I'm saying, or, or, or the uh, Harry, Nelson, Harry Nelson family. Yeah. You know, sometimes that's grandma, you know, and, and grandma needs some help as much help as she can. So if those young people can come to those off the street centers yeah. that they have, they're not funding <laughs> because we don't have a lot of YMCA's and y, a lot of y, no, YWCA's no, in our community. No, no Brady so, Bunch. so we have to get them off the <laughs> off the street. And I've seen this. See, I've seen the police department pull up on the individuals. To get off the street. Go somewhere. They're not not sitting nowhere. Not having no place for them to go. Yeah. If you invest money in that on the front end, you can deter crime. As opposed to in, in 2006, myself and Congressman Russ brought a team of everybody from Bill Daly to. Uh, Jerry Reinsdorf to his church, the fact, how can we stop this crime and violence? Look, let's produce jobs. We produced 1,200 jobs in 2006 and reduced crime and violence in 2006 by putting young people to work in the summer of 2006. Oh, oh. So those are the things you have to do. You have to not only just educate, you have to have some place to bring them in. Because I got tired of school uh, when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. You go to school all day and then you want me to go out the front door, come around the back to after school social center program. Yeah. I'm through with school. Let me leave the school, go to another environment, so I'm saying, so I can be better exposed to other people Roderick, and other things. Roderick yeah. Sawyer, I can leave off 63rd after this show, get a white t-shirt, two cell phones, blue jeans, sagging, mm -hmm. and I can make some crazy paper on the corner especially if I'm gang affiliated. So how do you fight that? Education and economic development becomes a cliche in some of our communities. So how do we attack the drug trade or do we replace it with something? You replace it with something. You have to have options. They took away all of our options years ago. We have to get them back. We have no training schools. Not everybody's equipped to go to college. Not everybody's equipped to be a rocket scientist, but they're great paying jobs in, in 
industrial jobs, uh, other commercial jobs. We don't have any more training centers to teach people to be a carpenter, teach people to be a brick layer, heavy equipment operator, TV, uh, in the TV production business. Mm -hmm. We have to have more opportunities for people. Right now, we have no opportunity. That's our problem. When we say to someone, get off the street, I talked to a young brother on the street. He said, I just got out of jail two weeks ago. I don't want to go back in these streets, but I want to, I need something to do. Give me something. You know, that's so frustrating, you know, when they took away from this, these things, especially with uh, school systems. Right, right. So, so, know, so, so drug dealing is not genetic. <laughs> no, it's not genetic. No, it's not, not genetic. But it is environmental. Let me, is, yeah. is, is it not? Is it not environmental? Yeah, yeah, let me break in on this because see, I, I, Roderick uh, struck a nerve there with myself. See, if you don't get on the highways and byways and understand the dynamics of what's happening with young people out there, all the young guys single on the block are selling drugs are not making any money. No, okay. Not. I mean, it's a small percentage of people making money. They the, really don't want to be there. The book Freakonomics, right. the two professors yeah. uh, from University of Chicago said the average drug dealer on the corner makes about $900 per month. Mm -hmm. So you're right, right. They're not making They're any not money. They're not making any money. They're, They're not, taking not, a risk not, because not it's a cat, all, not not a cat, the, risk. the cats yeah. above them, of course, they roll rolling a little bit higher, but yes, they are taking a but, big but, risk. But they're ro they rolling the dice because it's, it's going to be the graveyard or the penitentiary mm. or, or somewhere in between, you know, in somebody's wheelchair. So all I'm taking risks, they don't know. That's why the educational aspect come in. Say I educate them because I go on the highways and byways every day and talk to young people. You know, I created the gang deactivation program at Inglewood High School back in uh, 1992 and also Roberson. But they had a, a high rate of violence in and around the school. But was so, the, so but, you had to go but, and talk with the young people. But was the program sustainable, the, the, measurable, and was the it program, effective? The program, How program was the program was sustainable and measurable because when I went in there, they only had 41 graduates. The following year, and then the enrollment at the time was under 800. The following year, when I put the program in there, there was over 1,265 students and 130 students graduated that following year. So this is sustainable, okay. but you had, you, had, whoa, whoa. you had R.G. Johnson in there at the time. So, so when they brought Paul Vallis in, okay. he said there, there, there was no gangs in Inglewood. Uh -huh. Well, Inglewood is a community school, and the, the kids that go to the school live in Inglewood, so Gotta what's move. in the school? Got to move to Chase Smith, yeah, and I'm going to the things, phones. One of the things we need also is incentives for, for young <clears throat> brothers and sisters. And I don't believe the right incentives have been put in the right places. We can use music and arts all day long for young people to uh, inspire literacy, to inspire mathematics. There's a project going on in your ward, uh, Switch Dreams, Switch where they use mm -hmm. uh, basketball to help young uh, people learn mathematics. The incentives work, and we need to use them. Yes. But they got to be from a face they're Watch familiar them. with and, and, and feel like it's on their side. I like that. Let me go to phone lines. I think I've got Donna on the line or anyone calling off 63rd with Gerard McClendon. Talk to me. What's on your mind this evening? Yes, Gerard. Yes. Yes, first of all, let me congratulate you for being such a strong individual. Thank you. Yes, I would first of all like to say I'm very proud of Che Ryanfest. I'm one who is sick and tired of Chicago black politicians. And I think this man has some fresh ideas we need to hear, and he really wants to help his ward. I don't live in any of the ward. And I would like to say, uh, Hal Baskin, I think it's his time. I think he should win to be an alderman. I've been hearing news reports about him for years. Some of them have been hilarious. But I, I <laughs> hope that he makes it his alderman this time. Thank you. Donald, thank you for the call. We appreciate it. Getting mad props to Chase Smith.